use one note. It is a bit like free form. What is it with these cars? Hi, hello and welcome back. It has been a hot minute since I filmed, edited and uploaded a video, but I am back for a very short hiatus, I think. I am nearing my third year now of my PhD, but I am going out to Ecuador on Tuesday. It is now Saturday for my main stint of field work and I'll be there for nearly four months. So I've got some time this morning to film a video and I thought that I would do one that is really highly requested and that is tools, things, softwares, and all sorts of stuff that I think are must-haves for my PhD. This isn't to say that you'll need all of these things if you're doing a PhD or if you're just here to watch then you don't need all of these things, but these are what make my life easier and I use them pretty much day in, day out. There will be timestamps in the description for certain categories if that's what you're looking for. I'll also link whatever I can find of what I mentioned in the description, so without any more waffling from me, I will jump straight into it. The first thing is a really good quality fast working laptop. In the Oxford Biology department, I was lucky enough to be part of a cohort that was given a MacBook. I have the MacBook M1 2020 Air. I am used to working on Apple products and you'll see throughout this video that I am an Apple ho, but as long as it's fast working, it can access all of the websites and softwares that you need. Really, really recommend investing in a good one at the start of your PhD that will last you the whole way through. Keeping on the technology train, I also have an iPad. This is the Folio keyboard as well, which makes it into a stand like this and an Apple Pencil iPad Air fourth generation. I don't think they actually sell these anymore, but you can get iPads secondhand on eBay and stuff. So I use this as a split screen when I am working from home. So I'm reading papers, I'll put the paper on here and then my like note taking on my main laptop screen. It's super helpful and they're also really good for scribbling notes in meetings. But everyone always asks me, oh, it's my best friend Hannah. Um, everyone always asks me, is it worth getting an iPad? And I think they're not a necessity, they are very useful. And they're also much lighter. If I need to travel, I do some work, I'll always take my iPads because it's cheaper, less risky if I lose it, and much lighter. Carrying on with the tech, I have an office that is just around the corner from my uni room. I'm very lucky I live like a two minute walk away. But in there I have a screen, so I actually normally have three screens set up. It's so excessive, nobody needs three, but I have a big, screen and when I plug my laptop into it I have my laptop up on the stand so that I am not straining and leaning forward. I have a keyboard. This is the, I have no idea, George gave me this. It's the MX Keys Mini for Mac. It's not George's scribbles. It's so satisfying to type on. I love it. So I would really recommend having a keyboard. They're super useful if you have a screen that's at the back of your desk. A must have, whether you have multiple screens or not, is a good mouse. I've had this for literally years. This is the TechNet Optical Cordless Mouse. Bluetooth, it has no wires. It's really comfortable on your hand and it makes just doing stuff on a computer so much easier. I don't mind the trackpad, but would really recommend just getting a mouse. I think I paid like nine pounds for this. Um, it's battery powered. I've never changed the batteries. A mouse is a non-negotiable. Last tech thing, I think good quality headphones. I'm gonna actually cover this because they are engraved with my name and my phone number. I used AirPod Pros. I started off with a pair of first generation Pros a couple of years ago. They broke and I purchased these the same day. I tell everybody that they make my life better. So for me, they are so worth having. I'm also incredibly clumsy and this generation, if you leave them separately apart, they will play noise and it will tell you on your phone whether you're hot or cold, like close to them, which is an amazing feature if you're like me. Also, my first pair I got engraved and somebody texted me because they'd found my case, which restored my faith in humanity and I did get them back. So top tip, engrave with your name and phone number. Also super useful if you work in a shared office and people take calls. These ones are noise blocking. Big, big recommendation to invest in good quality headphones. I'm now into the miscellaneous things. Some of these are gonna seem really silly. I've thought of them over the last couple of days and they make such a difference. So the first thing for me is a phone case that you can put your uni card in the back of one, like this. And then when you, you can just access doors and only have your phone with you. I always leave without my purse, so having a phone case that's silly enough to sense a uni card through is a really great idea. It's pretty niche, but important. 
Second is a reusable water bottle. Don't be buying plastic, A, because it's awful for the planet, B, because it costs you loads of money and water should be free. Also means that you stay hydrated. It's really hard to work if you haven't drank enough water. So get a reusable water bottle and a flask. As you can probably tell actually, I'm packing my room up because I'm moving and so everything is empty. So these are really the essentials for me because they are all that's left out. Normally I have a chilies bottle or a flask as well to keep things hot when I go to the office. Thirdly, is good quality coffee if you like it. I love coffee. Also, shout out to my anthropology pumpkin mug. It is the 2nd of September, which means it is now okay. Having good quality coffee makes my life better every morning. I look forward to getting up and making a really nice one. So make sure you invest in something that's gonna make it easier to get out of bed in the cold winter mornings when you know that you've got experiments or work to do that you don't really want to. Even if it's tea or anything like that. Okay, also in the miscellaneous section and something that I can't really show you is to have a hobby or an interest that is not your PhD. In term times, I trampoline. I haven't actually done it in months and I do miss it. And I do Instagram. So although Instagram is now my job as well, sometimes I still see it as a hobby and I love doing it. It's one of my main ways that I relax, but make sure that you have something aside from your PhD that is gonna keep you mentally stimulated and you'll see progress in something that isn't just your PhD because I know a lot of people get really bogged down and they kind of become their studies. Bonus points if it keeps you fit. Continuing on, next up is a really good quality backpack. I was very kindly gifted this. This isn't an ad, this isn't sponsored, but I love it. It is so comfortable. It has about 50 bajillion pockets. It's got one here, one inside, one here, one inside. Six more on the inside, one at the front, one at the front, one from here, one at the back here. I went to Barcelona for a week and this is the only bag that I took. I think a really good quality backpack that fits all of your things is great, not only for your back, but it also means that you're not lugging around different bags everywhere. Although I use tote bags sometimes, they're not that comfortable. Also, bonus points if it looks cute. Within my bag, I have this pencil case. I find it really helpful to carry just a set of pens. <laughs> I find it really useful to carry around a set of pens with me. Also, in this bag, actually, is what my friends laugh at but use all of the time, is what I call my bag of everything. This is from Papier. In it is quite literally anything you could ever need. Tampons, tablets, face masks, hand cream, hand gel, um, a resuscitation aid in case I'm ever caught off guard, magic first aid. Um, this is a reusable carry bag, so it like unzips and becomes a tote shopping bag. All of these things are super useful, just have on you all the time. I've got hairbands, chewing gum, um, what's this? Glasses, literally all sorts, even if it's spare makeup, EpiPens, things like that. Definitely recommend, and then you can just throw it between bags onto stationary one. So let me go and get my notebook from my packing for Ecuador. One eternity later. Finally found them. So, A5 notebooks are my favourite to Ecuador. I'm taking a ring round and this one, which is so cool. I don't know if you can see that, but it's personalised. My top tip for starting in notebooks, because I know it can be hard, is to open the back page and just do a big scribble. Then you've broken the seal of the notebook and you can start it. In Ecuador, these will be used for field notes, so they're both going to get trashed and muddy and God knows what. Even if you take your notes on computers, have paper notebooks around for silly brain scribbles. And also before you buy them, double check that you're not gonna be able to get them from department or from your university because often they will have store cupboards for you. Then I have my paper diary from Papier. Look how cool it is, it is also personalized. It says, don't forget to have fun. These little inserts, I got a whole bunch, but I've just got two in at the moment. In it, I keep just some scrap paper that I have ripped up and we'll use in the future. Like the notebooks, it's really useful just to have small tatty bits that you can scribble on or do when you're doing results and stuff. This is an academic diary, so it has weekly views, which is where I put my to-do lists. This, this makes me look insane and my friend Bryony hates the fact that I scribble out like this. And then you can have monthly views, monthly goals, and it also has a grid calendar like this. There's a whole year view and there's deadline pages. That was two months ago and it's still not done. Timetables, there is literally all sorts in here. Notes pages, which make me look insane. Recipe ideas, finance trackers, and things like that. Having a diary is super useful. I also use an online recurring to-do list, which I'll show you in a second. Somehow you don't get the satisfaction of fully crossing something out when you just tick a box on a computer. So yeah, would definitely recommend getting an academic diary or something you can track your to-dos in. This is vital to my PhD. I wouldn't say success, because I don't know if I'm being successful, but you get the vibe. Okay, final category for what I think is really important for a PhD is a software that you use. At undergraduate, I didn't really know how to... 
I didn't really know how to take notes or how to organize things. And I actually wrote things by hand at the start and then I moved to Microsoft Word, but then I found that really hard to kind of organize and make sure that everything was findable. Now, obviously I don't have lectures or I'm not taught anything, it's all self-research, but there is a lot of information that I have to go through and make note of. So my main, main, main top tip, I tell this to everybody that starts uni, is to use Microsoft OneNote. Do not buy a Microsoft subscription, your university will give it to you, you'll get it free for the whole time that you are there. Microsoft OneNote is an incredible piece of software. You can create different notebooks, different pages, and you can control F the whole of your OneNote. So when you're looking for something from a specific topic, you don't have to filter through your whole laptop. You can just open the app and search it. You can add in to-do lists, hyperlinks, videos, documents that come up as whole pages so you can annotate them. You can draw on it via your laptop. You can also share and let other people work on the same document as you. I don't know how I didn't know about it undergraduate. My friend Katrina, when I started here, told me about it and it has honestly revolutionized my life. It also links with your Microsoft account, obviously, so I have it on all of my devices. You can add audio, PDFs, links, there's stickers, there's gifts, there's calendar invites. You can, honestly, it's incredible. I could rave about it all day. You can literally put in mathematical equations and it will work them out, which boggles my mind. Use OneNote. It is a bit like freeform if you use Apple. For presentations, I use PowerPoint. I love Apple devices, but Apple software is not quite it. I use Microsoft for anything like that. The next tip is to have a really organized email inbox. This is gonna sound crazy. I know you're like, oh, I don't have enough time. Keep it organized. I have a flagging system. So green is for I've responded, no response needed now, but it can't get lost in my inbox. Orange is may need a response in the future, but right now the matter is settled. And red is reply immediately, you need to do something with these. When they're flagged red, I normally try to only have like two or three in my inbox and make sure that I get through them daily. It makes it so much more manageable and don't have thousands of unread emails. Delete the things you don't need. Similar to that, have a really organized calendar. I have five different categories, I think, on my calendar. So I have work, holidays, my college role, PhD and normal fun life. Categorizing everything and using an online calendar makes life so easy for me. It links to my phone, it links to my iPad, it links to my laptop. I check it every single morning. Also upload it to my Instagram so you guys can see what I'm up to if you're interested in that. Uh, but yeah, use online calendar. Paper calendars can easily get lost. They get updated too often and you're scribbling everywhere. I just use Apple calendars. Next up, keeping on that same vibe is having an organized laptop. Every couple of days or every week, I will go through and clear my desktop. I will filter everything into folders, go through regularly and delete files that are old, that don't work. That you're never gonna go back to them, I promise. Just get rid of them. Bit of a tangent here. I did just recently buy whoop, two terabytes of Apple storage, which means they now uh, take my left kidney every month. But for me, it is so worth it to have the storage. My documents, everything like that is transferred across devices, slightly unrelated, but it take as little paper as possible. I think in my whole PhD, I've taken about five bits of paper. I always get the email copy or the online copy and then just save it somewhere on my laptop. It means I don't have folders everywhere and paper coming out of my ears. And it makes it so much easier to find things because you can just search in your documents file. And then back to the software section, use a recurring to-do list. I didn't know anything about this until I came across the app and it is Microsoft To-Do. You can add due dates for things, you can make them so that they recur weekly, bi-weekly, every two days, every hour, you name it, you can do it. I do this for things like cleaning my emails, cleaning my laptop, updating my LinkedIn, more on that later, doing my graduate supervision reports, things like that that I know I'm going to forget and I don't want to put in my diary for like a three months time yet. You can also categorise things by priority, especially as a self-funded student, I am required to write grant updates for charities that are very kindly giving me grants and stuff, but it has to be when the grant money has run out. So I'll put a little note saying in six months, write this because X, Y, Z. Use LinkedIn. It's not a necessity for a PhD, but using things like LinkedIn, Twitter, they are really, really great for your outreach and for sharing information about your PhD. Keeping your profiles updated is really key so that people can see what you're working on. And that includes your university profile. Have a picture, have your contact details, keep up to date so that people aren't gonna scroll by and think that you graduated seven years ago. Okay, I think this is the final thing on the software section. 
and that is to use Zotero. I started off in my PhD using EndNote and at undergraduate I didn't use any reference manager, I did it all by hand. That was fine, but now there is just absolutely no way I'm writing an 80,000 word thesis and I cannot do that. So I started using EndNote, EndNote crashed for me and I don't recommend it to anybody. It glitches all the time, it bugs out and it deletes all of your categories and references. Big, big avoid. And then I worked by hand for a couple of months because I wasn't really writing anything for my thesis. Asked on Instagram, and I'm not joking, about 3,000 of you said try and use Zotero. You can also link it with OneNote. It's really simple to use, it's really intuitive. It can export things directly from the internet. You can have it across all of your devices. So I have it on my laptop, my iPad and my phone. Let me find it on here. It looks like this. You have all of your papers. You can categorize things on the side. You can take notes. I actually started on my PhD taking notes on PowerPoint slides of different papers. No way it was useful at the start, but now it's so much more useful to have it all in Zotero. And it's free. I will scream from the rooftops about the software that I use because it makes my life so much easier. So that was a whistle stop tour of the things that I think are essential in a PhD. Obviously this is personal and no one needs all of the stuff that I use, but it's a great place to get you started or to get some inspo. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you very soon, hopefully sooner than the gap between my last video and this one. Adios!